Right now, I'm standing in front of a 3,000 square foot pathosolar greenhouse in Vermeer, BC, run by the Groundswell Network Society. This greenhouse was built close to seven years ago, and we've been documenting multiple data points throughout the entire greenhouse and can say with certainty that this greenhouse does not go below zero in the wintertime anymore. Over the last seven years, we've been looking at what has worked within the greenhouse as well as what hasn't worked, which has allowed us to create a series of directives around how to design greenhouses like this in the future to avoid those mistakes. Today, I'm gonna to take you through a tour of all the various components of this greenhouse so that you can learn from both our successes and from our failures. So let's go inside right now and take a look at all of those little components. And at the end, we'll have a really good idea of, of how this greenhouse actually functions. So one of the super neat things about growing in a pasta solar greenhouse that doesn't go below zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit is that you can grow plants that are like this. This is a banana. Actually, we've got two bananas right here. And this greenhouse is totally suitable for growing tropicals as well as Mediterranean plants that are not tolerant to going below freezing. Future plans within this greenhouse are to include more of these types of plants. Uh, actually, to my right, I've got some citrus. We've also grown figs in here, and there's also a uh, grape trellis up the side of the actual greenhouse itself. So it's pretty sweet to be able to move climate zones without having to move geographic locations. The primary vent system in the greenhouse, which is what allows the greenhouse to operate without overheating, is located above me. There's a common vent that runs the entire length of the greenhouse that's operated by a central shaft and a pinion system that pushes the vents open when the greenhouse gets too warm. One of the main setbacks or one of the main problems that we've had at the greenhouse is that it's generally underventilated. And I would say this is a common problem for most greenhouses. Typically in passive solar house design, the southern surface of the wall will be glazed to about 12 to 20% of the total surface area. Now, if you think about a passive solar greenhouse, 100% of the southern glazing area is glazed. And so it's kind of like running with a dragster that runs on alcohol. It's got a lot of ability to capture solar energy. And so you really can't overventilate a greenhouse like this. So we've got a giant vent system on the top, which works really, really well. But one of the things that I would change going forward if we were to use this greenhouse or build this greenhouse again is the actual design of the bottom vent, which is non-existent in this greenhouse. So literally, if we put a, a bank of vents closer to the ground level on the south side, we could completely change the ventilation dynamic of the greenhouse itself. Now, one other thing that we could do to improve ventilation within here is to actually have additional operable vents on both the east and the west side of the greenhouse. I'm standing in the peak of the greenhouse, so right close to the top of the roof right here. And beside me is a metal duct, which is essentially the heart of the technology that allows this greenhouse to stay above zero all winter long. We call this annualized geosolar, and the way that it works is this duct is connected into a fan, and the fan is connected into a series of pipes that go underneath the greenhouse. When the greenhouse gets above 21 degrees Celsius, the fan turns on, sucks the hot air out of the peak of the greenhouse, and injects it underground into those pipes, which then store that energy for later use. The greenhouse foundation or below the foundation can get as high as 25 degrees Celsius through the middle of the summer. And annualized geosolar systems are designed to release that heat six months prior to when it is stored in the ground. So in other words, heat that's stored in May will come out of the ground in October. This duct system has allowed this greenhouse to operate for the last seven years without any additional thermal energy through the use of natural gas, electricity, or any other heating source. It's a pretty interesting system, and I'll show you how we're measuring temperature and how the air goes into the ground and where it leaves the greenhouse while the fan is actually operating. 
I'm standing in front of the fan box. So the fan sits inside of here. And this is where that fan operates or turns on to suck air out of that top duct. Now the fan pushes air down into the duct system below it and then underneath the floor. The distribution system comes out of the fan right here, the fan box, and moves into these four inch ducts, which then transitions over to these four inch big O weeping tiles. So while we know the system is effective, one of the things that I think I would change in the future about this system is moving these ducts up to a larger diameter uh, pipe. What I find with these small diameter pipes is that they really limit the flow of air. Um, air is a strange fluid to work with in that um, it's nonlinear. So going up from a four to a six inch duct would probably make a really big difference in terms of the airflow through the floor. This is basically the technology of the system that delivers that hot air underneath the slab. And I'll show you guys exactly how that's designed um, in another image. When the fan is running in the greenhouse, it's actually pulling air out of the greenhouse because an AGS system doesn't recirculate the air uh, when it's running. Uh, basically, the air is pulled from the peak of the greenhouse, as we discussed, through the fan, under the floor, and then it's exhausted outside. That can basically set up a low pressure area within the greenhouse, which we have to compensate for. And so one of the ways that we compensate for that outside of infiltration is through an earth tube. So this earth tube basically is built out of fairly thick wall PVC pipe that runs all the way around the back of the greenhouse underground. And so when the fan is pulling air out of the actual greenhouse itself, it is actually replacing that air by pulling air from outside through the use of a low pressure area within the greenhouse. And as that air moves through this pipe, it will assume the temperature of the ground. So in the summertime, the air coming in will be pre-cooled. So if the air outside is 30 degrees Celsius or uh, you know, 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, that warm air will then get pulled through the ground, pre-cooled and brought into the actual greenhouse. In the winter time, if we're storing energy, which can happen actually when it's cold outside, if it's sunny, the greenhouse can get very warm. And so the fan can actually turn on in the, in the winter time as well. And so we don't want to bring in minus 20 degrees Celsius air in the middle of winter time. So this earth tube will allow that minus 20 air to come through this pipe and pre-warm it to the temperature of the earth so that we're not introducing, again, minus 20 or, or super cold below freezing air into the actual greenhouse, detrimentally uh, affecting the plants that are growing inside of here. All throughout the greenhouse, we've placed temperature probes so that we can monitor how the slab changes with temperature, how the air is moving through the earth tube. Um, and there are just hundreds of data points throughout this entire space, which we're in the process of processing right now to see exactly how the greenhouse has worked over time. So here's one, there's two going down into the slab right here. There's one going behind the greenhouse. There's one right down here. And these are literally littered all over the greenhouse, which go back to a central control unit and computer to log all of that data. Right beside me is the outlet from the annualized geosolar system. So when that fan is operating and pulling hot air out of the peak of the greenhouse and running it underneath the floor, this is where the air comes out of the system. So that air can go into that system anywhere from 30 to 50 degrees Celsius up at the peak of the greenhouse and get very hot. And when the fan is operating, the air can come out of here quite cool, anywhere from four to 10 degrees Celsius. So there's a significant temperature drop while the air is running underneath the actual slab of the greenhouse, which means it's storing energy. All the temperature probes that we have all around the greenhouse, as well as other sensing devices as well, come back to these Argus controllers. This controller not only data logs all of that information, but it also 
determines when vents should open. Um, if we wanted to add artificial light into the greenhouse, we could automate the artificial light based on PAR. PAR stands for photosynthetic active radiation. Um, the greenhouse itself does have a PAR meter. And so if we just look inside here, we can see that the brains of the greenhouse actually exist within this panel here. Now, for a lot of people, this is totally overkill in terms of trying to automate the actual greenhouse. This is the type of equipment that you'd find in a commercial greenhouse where they're actually growing for, for profit, not necessarily on a homestead. So I wanted to show this um, for the people out there that are looking to design a, a commercial passive solar greenhouse because this is the type of automation equipment that you'd likely want to have in that greenhouse. I'm hanging on to some electrical conduit that we've got uh, hooked into the actual trusses of the greenhouse with these airplane cables as well as they're projected out into or held up by uh, unistrut that are uh, tied into the columns of the actual greenhouse itself. This is a really important thing to think about when you're designing your greenhouse because it allows us to do all sorts of really interesting things. So number one, we can hang all of our irrigation pipe from up above, which is nice. It's an easy way to distribute water. Um, number two, we can actually tie all sorts of trellising equipment on here, depending on the types of crops that you're growing. So tomatoes can either um, grow up to these bars here, or we can actually grow them right up to the, the trellis. It's really nice to be able to distribute electricity, water, and trellising gear by having stuff like this. And, and the reason that I'm pointing it out is it doesn't have to be expensive. You know, a lot of this conduit's fairly inexpensive. These wires can be um, purchased fairly inexpensively um, and it just really adds to the usability of the space inside the greenhouse.